Uh, hi. W welcome, welcome to, welcome to learning about chemistry with Tucker, who is teaching it to you. I am Tucker, the the guy who will be teaching chemistry to you. Today, you'll be learning about chemical equilibrium, because I, Tucker, will be teaching will be teaching it to you. What is chemical equilibrium, you ask? Well, get get your pencils ready, because I'm about I'm about to teach it to you. Chemical equilibrium is a state that a chemical system reaches as soon as its forward reaction rate is equal to its reverse reaction. Its reverse reaction rate. Here's some here's some brief history on the topic. Chemical equilibrium, that is, because that's what I'm teaching. Chemical equilibrium was invented by God a, a, a really long time ago, but it wasn't discovered until the 1800s by Gillies and Berthelot, who realized that the concentration of the reactants of an equation af affected the concentration of the products of an equation, too. But it wasn't until the year 1877 that a scientist named Van Hoff figured out a way to to express this chemical equilibrium on paper. Here's the expression that Van Hoff came up with. The big A and the big B represent the reactants, and and then the big C and the big D represent the, the products, and then all all the little ones, the little the lowercase letters all represent the coefficients. Now that people aren't stupid anymore, we, we use this. One big part of chemical equilibrium that I'm going to teach you right now is called Le, Cha Le, Le Chandelier's Principle, Le Chardonnay's Principle, LeBron James' Principle, Luke Charbonneau's Principle, Les Miserables' Principle. Le Chatelier's principle. Now I know you're probably thinking, what on the, the world is that, Tucker? Well, just give me a second and I'll teach it to you. The Chatelier's principle says that if a stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, the system will change to, to relieve the stress. H how, do you, how do you stress out a, a chemical system? Do you give it too much homework? There are four ways to, to stress a system in equilibrium. Number one, the first way is to uh, increase the concentration of one side. Here's a, here's, here's a demonstration. Pretend that these three Pokemon cards that are upside down, that those are the, 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 the reactants, and this one that's flipped over is the products. And they have a three to one ratio at equilibrium. But then all of a sudden, you add four more of the, the, the reactants and it's way off its equilibrium. Well, it'll compensate by have, making one more of the products so it can balance out its equilibrium again. See, now it'd be because it's a three to one ratio again. The second way to apply stress to a chemical system is to apply pressure. See, for, for, for example, I have this balloon. And now that I've blown up the balloon, when I apply pressure to it, Let, let's pretend that I let's pretend I have a balloon. Now imagine that this chemical system where we're inside of this balloon that we're imagining. And you see that this side 
has two particles, and this side only has one. So while this side is condensed, the other side will have more particles there, because it will take up less space. The third way to add stress to a system is to change the temperature of, of the system. In this demonstration that I'm doing for you, I, you, you can see I have two identical systems that are both at equilibrium and they're both the same color. But when I cool one of them down, it changes color. And this is because the side of the equation that is exothermic is, is transparent. And there's more of it being made because it's adjusting to the temperature change. My ex-girlfriend is kind of like an exothermic reaction because when things started to heat up in our relationship, I started to see a lot less of her. Because she, she broke, because she she broke up with me. The fourth and final of the four, the of uh, the ways to apply stress to a, a chemical system that I'm teaching you is through photoelectric energy, and I I don't really know how to do a demonstration of this. But it's, it's the same thing as temperature, where the, it'll, the one that doesn't emit light will compensate if you add light to it. And, and it's the same as temperature, but just with light instead of temperature. Now, that was, that was, that's everything I know about chemical equilibrium. I, I, hope, that, I hope you learned something from everything that I, I was teaching you. Um...